Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well and welcome to the lecture. Today is Tuesday, 4th of August 2020. Therefore, Bala written, hello prof, hello Bala, hello. Therefore, we have uh, only now five students and lecture that they are joining us. Let's get started. You see the cover page of the lecture. The course, the name of course is Reinforced Concrete Theory and the code of that is CIV 481. Today we will see the shear in the on the beams, what's the effect of shear? You see now the topics of the lecture of today. You will see the shear in reinforced concrete beams and see some examples for the shear. Therefore, We started last lecture to see the shear and now we review that one and continue to see more examples. Shear and diagonal tension. You know, at the supports we have the diagonal tension, they are 45 degrees, the cracks and the tension is there. Therefore, the failure of the reinforced concrete beams in shear are quite different from their failures in bending. Shear failures occur suddenly with little or no advance warning. Therefore, as you remember, when we saw the flexural failure or failure due to bending moment, we had three different cases. Either we had the failure due to, to the failure of concrete, it was suddenly and without warning and was uh, very dangerous. If it was due to failure of reinforcement, it was uh, happened with the large def uh, deflections, deformations and no risk for the people that are living in that room or in that under that ceiling. And we had in the same time the failure of concrete and steel. Now, another case, if the failure is due to the shear, again it's sudden and is risky and is dangerous. Therefore, be careful of that. Failure happens with little or no warning before happening. Therefore, we should take care of that. You remember from uh, strength of material and statics, we had two formula, one for flexure or for um, stress due to bending moment and the other was shear stress due to shear force for here you know the in the first formula you see we have the flexural stress due to moment that it depends on the moment of inertia of the section and also location of neutral axis from top. For shear stress shown by a small or lower case V is due to shear force and also depends on the static moment of the section Q and moment of inertia of the section and also the width of the section, B. 
Therefore, you don't forget we saw this one for we saw this one for the case when we had homogeneous beam, plastic homogeneous beam. Why we had just one material when we talk about this formula in the strength of material, we had just one material and the section was homogeneous. But we have combined or composite section. In composite section, we have reinforcement and also we have concrete. Therefore, we have composite section. Therefore, it's a little uh, different, but we follow the same formula. We saw that if, for example, we have a simple support beam, the maximum moment occurs at the center line of or middle span. Happens here. But here we have the shear zero. <clears throat> but at support, we have maximum shear force and zero moment. It's very interesting that the location of maximum shear and maximum uh, bending are not in an individual section or the same section. That helps a little. Otherwise, we had should have a stronger section. And the location at a section, when we have a section of beam, you see the maximum of shear stress is at the maximum shear stress is on the neutral axis. And two marks or V max is here. But in the same section, you see the maximum of flexural stress is at top and bottom. Again, you see that at neutral axis is a zero. Therefore, again, location of maximum shear, flexural shear and <clears throat> Flexural stress and shear stress are not in the same location. It helps everything. Otherwise, we have very strong section we needed. We talked about the principal stress, which is shown by FP. Principal stress is the combination of flexural stress and also shear stress. At any point, any element, we follow this formula for principal stress. The principal stress has one angle alpha with the, the longitudinal axis of the beam. Let's see first three different cases for three different elements on the beam. Imagine we have one cantilever. And we considered one element at top extreme, which is shown here. If you see that one, just we have, for example, tension is opposite of a simple support beam. And that's maximum stress, depends on the applied moment, and also the location of neutral axis, which has a, sorry, which has a distance y from the neutral axis, and moment of inertia. Similar case will happen for the other point at the bottom. For example, perhaps here it's shown um, 
tension, but perhaps it's compression for cantilever. And it has one minus moment times the location and moment of inertia. But when we see one element at the center or on the meter axis, we see we don't have any moment, m is zero, flexural stress is zero, but we have shear. Shear stress to xy or vxy. Shear stress. This shear stress is vertical in the other side is vertical as well. But we had horizontal as well shear stress. Why? Because if we didn't have this horizontal, if you get one moment about a point at the corner, you see we had just a rotation. But here it stops. The make a couple, for example, the moment of this one and this one cancel each other. That's stable. Therefore, the nature of the shear is vertical and horizontal. Horizontal and vertical. I showed you before in the previous lecture that if you have one simple support beam, for example, because at the media span, Uh, you know, V is zero here, V is zero. So from this formula, you find tangent to alpha is zero and then alpha is zero. When alpha is zero, you know, principal stress has one angle of zero with longitudinal. This is FP. Principal stress. When we have principal stress here zero, the cracks are perpendicular to the Principal stress. Therefore, the cracks at the middle are vertical. These are the cracks. But when F is zero, that happens at support here, F is zero. This value is infinity. And infinity is tangent 90 degrees. Tangent to alpha equals tangent 90 degrees. Therefore, 2 alpha is 90 and alpha is 45 degrees. Over here, alpha is 45 degrees. It means that the principal stress near the support, it has one angle, uh, what angle 45 degrees, this is FP. That has one angle of 45 degrees here. Okay, when we have FP, with angle of 45, the cracks 
are perpendicular to the direction of FB. Therefore, the cracks at support, you see, they are even another direction that is, this is 45 degrees as well. Therefore, we say the cracks at support has an angle of 45 degrees. This angle is 45. Therefore, now you know that the crack at the mid span due to bending is vertical. But at support, they are 45 degrees due to shear. Now let's see the shear strengths of concrete and reinforced concrete beam. You know, we have one shear force, Vn, nominal shear force at the section, which has two components. The first component is Vc, the shear force due to concrete. And the second component is shear force due to steel, Vs due to stirrups, due to shear reinforcement. And you remember that when we have ultimate, for example here, ultimate shear force, it equals phi times Vn. Therefore, Vu equals phi, time, phi times Vn. Phi is reduction factor, but it's not 0, 09 like bending. You will see that it's 0, 075 is different. Therefore, if we consider the components of phi Vn, it has two components. Phi Vc depends on concrete in this section, and phi Vs and on the shear reinforcement in the section. <coughs> For the concrete is clear when we have a section. For example, this section has a dimension of V, W, and D. The formula is given by ACI for VC. Vc equals two lambda times a square root of a prime C times Vw times D. <coughs> lambda equals one for normal weight concrete. Therefore, lambda is one. And uh, why VW? Because shear stress is important at web. Imagine you have a T beam. This is VW. This is for us important. B is not important. Why? Because when we see the stress profile, when we have a T section, a stress profile is like this, and then maximum. Shear is on the neutral axis. Therefore, neutral axis, if it's at the web, this dimension is important for 
complexa. For rectangular beam, doesn't matter. BW is B for us. This is the same. You can say B or BW, they are the same. They have identical value. Therefore, we use this formula for calculating VC, shear force due to contribution of concrete. In this slide, we see the shear cracking. I told you at support that we have shear important. The shear directions are, have a 45 degrees. With the longitudinal axis of the beam and these are 45 degrees. <clears throat> but at middle span, if it's middle span, they are vertical. These are the cracks. You remember at middle span we had FP principal stress horizontal and at support Principal stress had one angle of 45 degrees with horizontal. Here is one. Therefore, you see some um, cracks are combination of flexural and shear. At the middle, these are due to flexural crack. In this slide, we see different form of reinforcement for shear. Therefore, this is a, for example, if it was closed even, this is a form of normal stirrup. When you have a stirrup, this is a stirrup. In practical, they made close by ACO. You see this open. Here is open. Here is open. This other is syrup. This is syrup. And I told you the shear has a nature of horizontal. If you have shear here, you see that shear cut at two locations the syrup, one here and one here. Because of that, you will see in the formula, we consider the area of steel two times the area of steel. AV is two times, you will see later, AV, area of shear st uh, steel is two times, times the area of steel. Area of steel up. If the area is, for example, pi d square, you should consider two times that. If you have this condition, actually you should consider four, one here, or one here, one here, and one here. You should consider AV four times of the area of one steel. Here again, four. One, two, three, four. It shows why it considered one shape like this. You don't like that, perhaps, but the efficiency of that is four times. Here again, there is two times the area, one here, one here. It is not recommended to use this type when we have earthquake zone. When this Building is constructed in the earthquake zone. This type of stirrup are not satisfactory for members designed for seismic force, uh, forces.
Therefore, we have 10 students at class now, but I think some students perhaps they thought this is the week for final exam and this happened. No, final exam will start tomorrow. From tomorrow, 5th of August up to the 8th of August. Therefore, today we have lecture. In this slide, you see one analogy of the shear stress, bending stress, and shear reinforcement, bending reinforcement, and it analogy with a truss. You see that we have, for example, inclined cracks due to shear here. And we have some vertical cranks due to bending. And we have longitudinal reinforcement. And also stirrups, we consider here vertical. Therefore, the behavior of concrete reinforcement, etc., shows like a truss. In this slide, you see the two types of shear reinforcement. One of them is vertical. These are vertical stirrups. That's not bad. We use them. But a better one is bent up bars, which they are inclined. When the bar is inclined, it's perpendicular to the cracks and has efficiency of 100%. It's very good. But vertical, the, comp the components of that in the perpendicular to the direction of the crack works. Okay, therefore, we have two types of uh, stirrups. One is vertical. The other one is inclined or bent up. They are inclined. Here you see the inclined one. And also you see the vertical ones. Both of them are okay and it's good. <clears throat> Now let's see design for shear. The maximum shear we that we calculate from the shear diagram in a beam must not exceed the design shear capacity of beam in the cross section, which is phi times Vn. Therefore, we have one applied one, this is applied shear. Maximum shear should be less than the capacity of shear at the section which is shown by phi Vn. And phi, the reduction factor for shear, as I mentioned, is 0 0.75, not 0 0.9 or less than that. And Vn is nominal shear strength of concrete. And as I mentioned, the applied shear force should be less than shear capacity of the section or in design we consider equal. Therefore, if we put <clears throat> an of Vn to components of that, that one was related to shear force due to concrete, the other shear force due to steel, the resisting or the capacity. Finally, we have Vu should be less than or equal to phi Vc plus phi Vs. In design, we use this formula. This can be the capacity or the applied load and phi 
0.075075, we see the contribution of concrete in capacity of shear, shear force, which formula given by SCI to us, I showed you, and Vs, the shear force due to the stirrup of steel. Therefore, when we use the vertical stirrup, for vertical stirrup, Vs has a formula like this. AV, as I mentioned, is the area of stirrup that contribute to the capacity of shear. That is two times the area of one uh, steel bar. FYT is the yielding strength of stirrup. And D is the distance between stirrups. If you see the figure, no, D is D, you know that. D was the efficient efficiency, efficient depth. For example, here, this is D. From the center of the longitudinal bar to the top. And we have S. S is a spacing between stirrups. That's shown in the figure. If you see S, S between one stirrup and next stirrup, there is one S spacing that should be fine. Therefore, for vertical stirrup, use this one for Vs. If you find S from this formula, we find a direct formula that directly we can find a spacing between the stirrups from that. For one normal stirrup, as I told you, let me show with another color. If we have one shear stress at this level, shear stress cut at two places, one here and one here, the steel. Because of that, AV is two times of the right AV equals two times of AV of stirrup. For example, if the section of stirrup has a This one consider D. The A stirrup equals to I D square over four A V is two times of AST. Pay attention. Therefore, the other elements Y, F, Y, T, it is the yield strength of a stirrup, D is efficient depth of the beam, and V, S is the shear due to a stirrup. And then we have V U equals V five V C plus five V S. From here we can find V S. Which is V U the maximum shear force applied, ultimate shear force. When you see U, there is load factor as well. They have minus the contribution of the concrete in shear force 
divided by phi, we find Vs. And Vs can go in this formula here to find S. Therefore, this is the principle that we use for finding the spacing between a syllabus. S. Here, we, when we have the inclined shear reinforcement, we use this formula, which alpha is the angle between the longitudinal axis of the beam and the syrup. S is the spacing between them. You can say this one. Spacing. And Vs we can calculate here. Now, <coughs> when we have again bent up bars, but they are in groups, what happens? It means that one, two, three, they pass from the same location. In that case, we use this formula. First one, you see, they had distance between them. They were separate. But here, no, they pass from one location. One here, one in the same section, in the same section. Here, it shows that the bent up bar or it called truss bar. And here we have bent up and also the vertical stirrups that is shown in the figure as well bent ups. You see that. Now let's see what are the ACI requirements, ACI code requirements. For example, when we calculate the area of the stirrup, we should find a minimum for that. The AV minimum comes from this formula. S spacing between stirrups, BW, FY, and etc. But this should not be less than one value. This should not be less than the value of pain that should not be less than, uh, for example, the value of pain with a 50 PSI strength when we have 50 BWS over FYT. Therefore, we have one here and formula, another formula here. Both of them should be verified. And we have some conditions that later you see we apply in the table. If a square root of a prime C is greater than 44, 44 PSI, the minimum value of AV is controlled by the expression given here. So in that time, a S mean, a, a V mean comes from here. A V mean. And if a prime less than a prime C, uh, a prime C is less than 44, 44 PSI, the minimum AV value controlled by harder formula. This is AV minimum. But I think it is a mistake here. 
you look, this is here compared with a square root, a prime C, but here it says a prime C. This should be a square root a prime C as well, because the same value. One is smaller than this one, one is greater than this one. Therefore, this is wrong. Please correct this one at the square root of a prime C. Therefore, <clears throat> the summary of steps that we follow to calculate the vertical stirrups in design are as follows. In the first stage, we ask one question. The question is that, is shear reinforcing necessary? First, we should see. Do we need the shear uh, steel reinforcement or not? Or concrete is enough? No. For answering this question, we follow first the step, we draw the ultimate shear force diagram. Clear in the beam, for example, you sketch this one. And later you see that if we have a, for example, simple beam or hinge beam, We don't say that the VU max is at support. We say V max is at a distance D from the support. Because the cracks happens from there. Therefore, we consider this one as VU or VU max. not this one as support. Calculate VU at the distance D from the support, as I mentioned you. Now, in step three, we calculate the capacity of concrete for shear, phi, Vc, which as I told you, it equals to two times phi lambda root square prime C bw times d. And we saw that lambda equals one for normal weight concretes. At a step four, we see a stirrups are needed or not. A stirrups are needed if we use the applied ultimate shear is greater than half of the capacity of the shear of concrete, one over two five we see. Therefore, we, if we you applied shear, ultimate shear force is greater than half of the capacity of the concrete shear, shear due to concrete, we need. We don't consider it 5 VC, we consider it half of 5 VC for safety factor. And in next stage, we design the syrup because in the first step we see, is it required to say if yes, we go to the next step. In the second stage, we see step one, we calculate the syrup spacing, S, from the formula that we had. And for Vs, as I mentioned, we use this formula. In second step, we check that S that we calculated in step one is okay or not. How? 
we compare with the maximum spacing provided minimum area of shear reinforcement that given by the code. We can create S max from here. And should not be more than other value. Therefore, we calculate two values here and compare with our original S that we calculated from this formula. And then is not finished. Even we calculate another spacing, it should be not greater than D over two or 24 inches if the S is less than this value. Another similar condition may happen. We instead of D over two, we considered S max is D over four. When the S this time is greater than this value. Therefore, these two conditions, they are different. One VS is less than that value, the other one VS is greater than the one value. And normal case, we have V over two, but in some rare cases, we have V over four. And also VS should not exceed this value. If we S exceed this value, we should change the section, the reinforcement and putting reinforcement is not enough. And in general, in practice, minimum spacing should be not less than three inches or four inches, seven centimeter or 10 centimeter. These are the normal cases. Now let's see one example. Actually, this example is not one example. This is four examples. It has A, B, C, D. The beam shown in the figure was selected using a y equals 60,000 psi and a prime c 3,000 psi. Normal weight concrete is used. It means lambda is one. Determine the theoretical spacing for the case that we have a stirrup number three. Therefore, the AB, or I can say the, we selected the size of the syrup. In the formula, we have two unknown. What is the, what is the size or the area of the steel? The other is the spacing. Therefore, we have selected one of them. We calculate the other one. The size of the steel is selected. We calculate the spacing of that. Therefore, we should find the spacing S is unknown. The size of a stirrup is given. When number three is given, we have the area of that and we can calculate. Now let's start with case A, which Ultimate shear force is given 12,000 pounds or 12 kips. Therefore, for solution for case A, VU is given. Lambda is one, why? Because we have normal weight concrete. We calculate the capacity of concrete for shear force. The formula was given. We apply the value. Phi is 0 0.75. Look. Therefore, for actually, 
actually this is two, this is 2.1 is nothing. You can forget this one. That's, ah, this is lambda. One is lambda. We applied lambda here. And f prime c, b or bw, they are the same for rectangular section times d. We find vc, the capacity of shear only due to concrete is 27,000 pounds. If we compare half of this value, which is 13,000, about 13,000 pounds, is greater than the U that we applied from the beginning. It's greater than this one. What does it mean? It means the concrete is enough to resist the shear. No need for a steel up. We don't have a steel up here, you saw, no steel up. But we say that, but code enforced us to put a spacing, for example, for D over two, some steel up, even if we don't need that. This was the solution for part A. Now let's see the solution part B. Let me erase this ink. I'll ink it in the slide. <coughs> in part B, we see the U equals 40,000 PSI. We should calculate again 1 over 2 phi vc and compare this vu with that one in exam if i give one part you should calculate again vc <coughs> here we use from the previous part but in exam you cannot okay Theoretical spacing, here when we calculate, you remember that 1 over 2 PSI, it was something about 13,000, but here the U is 40,000. It's greater than that. It's clear that we have this condition. Therefore, it, need, it means that we need the steel-ups. Therefore, we can go and calculate the spacing. How? First, we calculate Vs from here, from this formula, and apply the values Vu, and it was 5Vc. Divided by 5, we find Vs, the contribution of steel up in shear force. We apply this value that we found here for Vs and as I mentioned AV was two times of the area, two times of area of one steel bar that it was number three that we found from table. This one is from table, but we consider two times. Why two times? I told you. If we have one steel up, the horizontal shear cut in two places, one here and one here, the steel up section. And we apply the other values the yielding stress of steel, D, we find one value for S. I call that S1. This is one formula for S. Now we should check with other values. 
Why? Because our still uh, spacing should not be greater than maximum spacing, which provides minimum AV. Therefore, this is for applying the minimum AV. We calculate S2, as I showed you from the formulas before in the table we have. Again, don't forget we use AV two times of the area of the steel. And the other values, we find the value for S2. We see another one, which is S3. We apply the other value. Again, AV is two times the area. We find this one. And we go for S4. I call this one S4. S4, you remember that we calculate, we compared the S given with a value four times something like that. You see that the S is something about 16,000 is less than 73,000 calculated from this equation. Therefore, according to table, we have S equals, S4 equals D over two. If we calculate is 12. Therefore, now we have four values, one, two, three, and four. We consider minimum value among these four. Minimum value. You see that the minimum is this one now. It shows this one, but it's wrong. The minimum is 12. Comparing 19.70, 22.95, 18 18.86, and 12. Therefore, this is selected as the spacing between still up. This is the answer. Now let's go to next part. At part C, view is 60,000 pound, increasing view. Again, when we compare with one over two, five, we see, we see that we need a stirrup. If we should calculate a spacing between the stirrups. Again, we apply this formula to find the Vs. We apply the Vu given. This part 5Vc we calculate from the previous part. We apply the phi and we find Vs one value. We put this Vs here in the formula. And don't forget again, AV, I am repeating for several times, that this is two times the area of one stirrup. Because shear reinforcement, it acts at two locations. Therefore, we find S1 equals 7.33. We go, we calculate S2 from the 
formula given again AV is two times of one AV obviously instead of we find another value. We go and find S3 again AV two times, don't forget that. We find other value. This time again we calculate the S given with a value that we calculate from this equation which equals 73,000 PSI. Therefore Vs is less than this value. You remember therefore maximum S which is S4 equals D over 2. Now between S1, S2, S3, and S4, we select the minimum values. If you compare 7.33, 22.95, and also 12, you see that the minimum value is 7.33, that we select it as a zero. You see that by increasing the value of VU, the spacing is decreasing. The syrups are closer to each other. <clears throat> now let's see the last part. Last part when we had the applied ultimate shear force is 150 pounds. We have one more student who is adding. Okay. In this case, again, we compare this one with one over two phi VC. We see that is greater than that value that we need syrup apparently we can calculate the s from vu that is given phi vc over phi we find 163 pounds we compare this vs with the formula that we had we see that Vs is greater than calculated value here. We say that Vs may not take in greater than this one. It means that we have a large amount of shear force applied and the section is not enough even with a steel. Therefore in this case we need larger beam or or and or both of them is possible with larger value for a prime C. It means that we should strengthen the section either larger dimension or increasing the strength of concrete for resisting more against the shear. Therefore, we see so for different cases for different results. 
Now let's see <clears throat> how we design the syrups along the length of beam and how we change that and etc. Select steel number three as a stirrup. Over here, a steel is selected by us. Just we should calculate the spacing. Because always we select the syrups, small sizes. For the beam shown the, in the figure, the beam has a length of 14 feet, a section of given with a rectangular section B15 or BW and be the same, B22.5 point half point five inches and a steer up size is given. Now we calculate the spacing. What is the spacing for this one? This is the question. Therefore, the load, distributed load on the beam is given, which WD for dead load is four kips per feet. And for live load, W is six kips per feet. A prime C is given, 4,000 PSI. And given normal weight, when we have normal weight, lambda equals one. And yielding strength of the stirrup is given, 60,000 PSI. You remember the steps that we have. The first step, we should sketch the shear diagram. Because the beam and the loading was symmetry, we sketched just half of that. The length of beam was 14 feet. We checked we only for seven feet. If first, you remember that at I told you, let's show here. When we have this beam, imagine this is new axis of that. If shear is like that, and we consider at the middle zero, shear diagram. At support, we have one shear. But we don't use this value for calculation. We don't use this one. We consider another shear that is a distance D from support. And we consider this value as VU max. Why? Because 
here there is no crack. Cracks start from here. Therefore, you say how we calculate V u. It's very easy. I show it with another color. Imagine that this value that we have at support is clear is W times L over 2. How we calculate this V, this value? You know, this is the And here is L over 2 minus D. Therefore, if we write the similarity between these three, two triangles, one here and the other one here, the figure one, we can find very easily the value of Vmax. <coughs> Therefore, here we found a value of Vu This is VU. That we consider as VU max and we use in the calculation. As I mentioned, you can calculate this VU from similarity of that this is D. And D, let me see how much it was. D was 22.5. Therefore, D is 22.5 inches. And 7 times 12 is 86 or 84 inches. Therefore, this is VU. times L over 2, half of load comes here. That has a value of 100.8 kips that we calculated from here. The U equals L times load factor 1, 2 for dead load, 1.6 for live load. And this is 1.8 kips. The half of load comes here. Half on this is this the support load or shear as support. Therefore, we have this value. We find to find this view. In this example, it doesn't show how to find this one. But it's clear, similarity of this triangle and the bigger one we can find VU max here. Which is equal here as well. which we found, as you mentioned, this value. 
<clears throat> now we see how many zones we have. We calculate phi Vs, the capacity of shear capacity of concrete only. Goes give us one line here. And when we calculated it, it was like this. And if you go vertically, you have here. But for deciding, we put a syrup or not, we consider half of that. Therefore, we can calculate 1 over 2 phi BC, which is something 16,000 pounds. We find another value here, it's half of that. We say for this zone, no need for a stirrup. And a steel is enough. But from here to here, we need a stirrup for the other parts. We say maximum VU is here, therefore we consider here constant. If forget this increase one, we don't consider it. Therefore, if I wanted to sketch the shear diagram that we should follow for a stirrup, I show with the blue one. Here is constant, here is decreasing. So we should follow this curve. It's clear when we consider this view here, we find one S. A spacing between a syrup. When we come one meter, for example, away from that, and we calculate again from similarity of the triangles, another value, for this one we find another S. And up to here, or oh, up to here is better or we can have another S here. Depends on how you calculate, how you want to make economy. But for the last part, no need for a stirrup. But you mean a spacing at least D over two, maximum spacing. Theoretical, no need for a stirrups, but we should practically some value with S spacing equals D over two. Therefore, this is the anatomy of stirrups and calculation in the beam. Therefore, considering the VU, maximum VU that we calculated, From this formula, we find 5ES, and then by applying the values that we had, 5VC, VU applied, we find 5VC equal to so. Applying here, we find divided by 5, we find VS. Therefore, we should check the other values, the maximum spacing. One of the limitations that we should check, it was D over 2. Should not be S greater than this value. Why? Because we checked and the S is less than this value. Another maximum spacing should not greater than this value. No, this is the 
formula that we apply. Don't forget AV is two times the area of one stirrup. We apply the values and the VS that we calculated, we find one value for SVF. And checking the maximum spacings rather than V over two, we find another S as we saw. Again, don't forget AV. Two times times the area. Why I am repeating and insisting? Because I saw in exam some students make mistake. Some of them put two AV, some of them not. All of them is two AV. And then you find this value. And then we see S from another control. Again, AV two times of the area of one stirrup and we find this value. You should check the values. One is here. Second one from the main formula. Third one from another minimum. And fourth one from the last one, the controlling the minimum AV. And the minimum for these three, four values, if you see, the minimum is 5.33 inches. Therefore, we select this one as S. This is S for applied VU max. If you put this S everywhere on the length of the beam, it's okay as from the point of safety, but is not good economy. Therefore, what you do, as I told you, let me get back to the, uh, for example, this slide. Let me erase all inks here. You divide. This was one view you calculated. You consider a spacing one meter, I don't know, one foot, three foot, three feet. You consider another view here and calculate another S. And then another one, and then. When you see stirrups, stirrups up to here, for example, up to here, these are very close to each other. S is smaller. And for up to here, they have greater spacing. And here, they have greater spacing. Therefore, you had S1. You calculate it for this one. You have S2. It's not the minimum one that I told you. This is for this one. And you calculate another view and apply this value up to this point that you need a syrup. So if I show you, perhaps you can divide by, for example, a syrup one up to here. up two up to here three up to here and you have one four here theoretically we don't need a syrup for this zone 
what I, as I mentioned, as pratic, we use S consider D over 2. Therefore, you can apply here. Therefore, don't forget the theoretical one that we don't need a syrup. We put a syrup everywhere, even here. I hope you enjoyed the lecture up to now. Let me go back. This one, you see there is some videos that I selected for you. It shows very well the concept, the application, and some examples. Please see that. And I show you a little, and you can continue for more videos later. And don't forget, practice similar equations. You know that our reference book is Design of Brainforce Concrete, written by Jack McCormack and Russell Brown. Therefore, I stop here. If you have any question, please ask me. Otherwise, I show you one video about the shear force, and then perhaps you understand better. Let me show you. Is there any question? We have, I think, 17 students. At, no, even 16 students we have at lecture. Let me see if there was any question or not. Hello, Prof. Hello, these are nothing. Okay, hello. Hello to you as well at the beginning. And now. No. Ihab and Salem said thank you. Thanks, Prof. Thank you very much. This means that you are satisfied and no question. Okay. For, therefore, I uh, cut this presentation and show you one video that is very nice and please follow that i show you therefore ah yaman written hello prof can you please check your email what does it mean my email why i should check my email it's the, if you have question ask here now please i, I always i check my emails don't worry. Okay, now I show you one and I'll cut this presentation and show you one interesting video from the lecture that we have. Okay, let me go here. Mm -hmm. Yes. was recorded, the course was recorded in the UZM as well. But if I can find, it's very good. So you want very nice video. Um, this is a little different. 
okay let me show here for instance uh, you know one of the things i've been uh hammering into your head is things like you know what here i am now Sharing the screen again. Okay, you can see and follow the share uh, strengths. Okay, so um, this is a little different. Um, for instance, uh, you know, one of the things that I've been uh, hammering into your head is things like, you know, what is B for being? It, it depends. Well, that's for moment. For shear, it's 0.75. So, you know, of course, you know, I've got a fee by the same, 0 0.75. Shear design, I, I think, is kind of nifty. Uh, in the end, I think it's, it can be kind of uh, a fun endeavor. Um, and it takes a, a fair amount of engineering judgment. You need to make sure that what you're specifying makes sense. Um, but before we get into all that, I do want to take some time and actually review what's going on with shear and, um, and why it's important and all the mechanics associated, et cetera. So let's start off with this. If you left structural analysis unable to do this problem, I failed as a professor. A simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load, I have got to believe you can do that, right? Moment diagram, WL squared over 8, all that jazz. Okay, we have hammered this problem to the ground, okay? We have done slabs, we have done beams, we have done uh, rectangular beams, T beams, doubly reinforced beams. We have done just about every beam problem that we can. Now it's time to discuss shear, okay? Which you all probably need this. So um, I, I think we've handled moments, you know, as, uh, as much as we can. Shear, on the other hand, you know, we, we haven't touched. And, and you all should know from structural analysis that is something we have to deal with. I mean, shears are, are, are there. Now, um, one thing that is a little different, um, and we'll see this later when we get to this in steel design, it's funny how in steel design I really don't talk about shear very much because the way that we manufacture roll uh eye shapes in the United States, shear just doesn't, it really hardly ever matters when you're dealing with a, a, a rolled beam. What ends up happening within steel is you'll have like 20 tips of load and shear and like 200 tips in capacity. It's just one of those things where shear just doesn't matter. Concrete, however, we have to do a fair amount of, of design for it. Now, the way that we resist shear forces in reinforced concrete is through uh, shear stirrup layouts, as you see here. So uh, what you've got here is a, an image of a typical rebar cage in a reinforced concrete beam. So you see here on the bottom, these are the tensile reinforcement beams you already know how to select. Up top is the, uh, the compression reinforcement that really mostly serves to tie the cage together. But you notice these sort of hoops that are uh, circling the, the the two, or the two sets of bars. These are called shear stirrups. It's basically just bent pieces of rebar that we lay in the beam. Now, one thing that might be kind of subtle uh, right off the bat until you notice it, notice how they're more bunched up near the supports than they are in the middle. Uh, that's, that. that's because 
sears are higher at the supports than they are in the middle so it stands to reason you should have more of them at the supports than you do in the middle and largely that'll be the case okay now what happens with shear go back to that wonderful world of more circle you don't know about that right remember you've got a stress state in two dimensions and you want to determine what the principal stresses are and the maximum shear stress and what have you if you have a stress state that is under pure shear and you calculate your principal stresses you will find two things one your principal stresses are equal and opposite so you'll have some amount of tension and some amount of compression and two when you look at that orientation that rotation it's at a 45 degree angle now why the heck does that matter go down to the lab and put up a, a reinforced concrete beam and load it in shear and see what happens what ends up happening is you get a failure mechanism that looks something like this. First thing to notice is see how that crack occurs right around, oh, I don't know, 45 degrees. That's number one. Number two, look at the failure mechanism. Okay, it was a crack, but the crack opens this way, right? See that? It's opening this way, which is the direction that we're seeing tension. Concrete, strong in compression, but it's weak in tension. Okay. Make sense? If you look at shear buckling in steel beams, it's kind of the same phenomenon, only instead of you know the material cracking, it buckles in the opposite direction because of the material being in compression. So. All right. So, make sense? All right. When we what's that? Oh. when we compute our capacity. We go back to our fundamental LRFD, uh, ultimate strength design expression, that the factored resistances must be greater than or equal to the factored load. Now, our resistance is calculated as follows. We say that the nominal resistance equals the shear strength that's provided by the concrete plus the shear strength that's provided by the reinforcement. Seems to make sense, right? Very good? Okay. Now, because we're not dealing with... Um, different levels of ductility, if you will, uh, for shear as opposed to moment. For moment, our ductility was a direct function of how much uh, steel we had and how much strain we were able to achieve. Speed changes. For shear, however, that's not really the case. We tend to get around the same amount of ductility regardless, so we accept a, a speed value of 0.75. Okay? <laughs> now, in terms of shear strength, if we look at the concrete, it's pretty simple. The shear strength of concrete is constant, okay? And we calculate it as 2 times the effective area, B times D, times lambda, that lightweight aggregate factor, lightweight concrete parameter, and then times the square root of FC prime. So let's just make sure we're clear on a couple things. So lambda, remember it's 1 for lightweight concrete, it's like 0.85 for sand lightweight concrete, point or lightweight concrete in general. B and D are the beam widths and the effective depths. Square root of FC prime, remember, put in PSI, get out PSI. Remember that? All right. So if you calculate V sub C correctly, you should get an answer in pounds, okay? Because B and W are in inches, so that's inches squared. This is PSI, so it'll be PSI times inches squared to be pounds. Okay, okay with that? No, 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 no. We've, we've talked about this before. That square root of FC prime. Remember, when you're dealing with square root of FC prime, that's that empirical model. Put in PSI, you get out PSI. Calculate that. You put in 4 as opposed to 4,000, you will get a different number. And I promise you it will be the wrong number. It's an empirical model. We've, just, we've, got, we've discussed this before. Sound good? Go ahead. Tell you what, do, do the rupture strength. Do, do 7.5 times the square root of FC prime. Put in 4 and put in 4,000. Guarantee you get a different number. All right. Now, is everybody, is everybody okay with that? All right, now, the shear resistance for the steel is a little bit different, okay? The way that 
we calculate that is we say it's the area of the shear reinforcement times the yield stress times this number N, which N is the number of bars per beam depth. So a number, uh, another way you can calculate that is the depth divided by the spacing, and we'll talk about that for a little bit. The idea behind N is that we assume, okay, we're, we assume that, that the beam di uh, cracks diagonally you know, as follows, and that N value is basically we're trying to determine how many stirrups are there in a given crack. So it's the depth divided by the stirrup spacing. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Now here's another thing. A sub B. A sub B is the area of steel that resists shear. Okay. Now this is a typical shear stirrup layout. Let's say you've just got a, a typical U-shaped stirrup or a hoop-shaped stirrup that you see right here. If I cut a section through that crack, how many bars am I cutting through right here? Not one, but two. Does that make sense? If I look up the, let's say they're number three stirrups, a, a very common stirrup size. If I look up a number three stirrup, the area of the number three is 0.11. My A to B, however, would be 0.22. Does that make sense? And that's going to change depending upon your stirrup layout. This would be the area of two bars. This would be the area of two bars. This would be the area of one bar. This would be the area of how many? Four. All right. Does that make sense? Okay. Everybody good so far? Okay, so a couple notes. All right, so we all we do have a minimum amount of uh, shear reinforcement that we are to provide, but we usually that usually never uh, becomes a problem. Uh, we also have maximum stirrup spacings that we have to uh, that we have to uh, 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 deal with. That actually does tend to become a governing stirrup spacing near the end. Uh, when you do stirrup design, you tend to do your stirrup design based on a minimum spacing and a maximum spacing. Your maximum spacing is a function of your shear strength of your of your steel uh, compared to this. Uh, upper limit of the uh, capacity of the concrete. <clears throat> Sorry. Everybody okay with this so far? We're going to do a couple examples to kind of illustrate this. It's not, it's not too bad. All right. Okay. This is actually um, kind of atypical in, in the world of uh, concrete. A lot of times um, you aren't really asked in textbooks to analyze a beam shear capacity. But I want to do that so that you all understand these procedures front to back. This is an important design process to learn. And, uh, and uh, arguably, I think it's one of the things that's kind of an afterthought in, in, in structural design. I mean, a lot of times you're so focused on the moment, and then, ah, shear, let's just put some stuff in there. Now, this stuff matters, okay? So uh, I want to do a shear analysis problem. Uh, We've got 4 KSI concrete, this normal weight, 60 KSI steel. It's a 24 foot long beam. Uh, number three stirrups are utilized. Here you can see the cross section. Notice I'm not really giving you anything, any data about these three bars down here because I don't care. We're not looking at moment, we're looking at shear. Now, this is 1.5 tips per foot dead load, three tips per foot for live load. Uh, and here's the layout. Now, what we've got here are a series of stirrup layouts. I want you to kind of understand what this diagram means. So here's the center line of the beam. So all I'm showing you is the stirrup layout from a support to the center line, okay? So imagine on the other end like a mirror image, okay? Now we've got these multiple regions of stirrup spacing, which that's one thing I do want to point out. That is common to have multiple regions because if you can shave the number of uh, stirrups in a given beam, you might go, well, what does it matter if you had 20 stirrups versus 18? Does that really affect the economy? Well, if they're using 800 of those beams in a given building, yeah, <laughs> yeah that does matter. So th this is a, a very uh, 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 important point to make. But at the same time, you also have to have a little bit of engineering judgment associated with it. You don't want to specify you know, eight different regions if all you're going to do is cut out one stirrup. Don't want to make it too complicated. There's a little bit of give and take, you know. You gotta. That's where that engineering judgment comes into play. Everybody okay? All right. We're 
I'll break out some of the structural analysis skills that y'all learned last semester. Got a couple parameters that are kind of important. Let's start off with some material constants. All right. So we've got, I'll say for the concrete, we've got FC prime is 4 KSI. And we said normal weight concrete. So that means that our unit weight is probably 150 pounds per cubic foot. And what's lambda? So the steel, we have Fy is 60 KSI. All right, um, now let's look at some of the beam geometry. Make sure we've got all that written down. Okay, so this beam is... Uh, whoops, not 20, 24. 24 feet, or 288 inches long. Okay, uh, let's see, we've got... The width of the beam is, what is it, 12 inches? Uh, the depth is 24. The height is 27. Everybody see where I'm getting this? Okay. Now, we have number three stirrups. So, the area of a number three bar is 0 0.11 inches squared. Therefore, the area in shear, or the area of shear reinforcement is uh, 0 0.22. Okay. So far so good? Alright. And then our loads We don't know what the self-weight is. We're going to have to compute that. We know that dead load is 1.5, is it, kits per foot? And Everybody 
with me so far? Okay. So let's start off and let's do some structural analysis. All right. So tell me this. How am I going to compute self-weight of the beam? Times what? There we go. Point one five tips per cubic foot on twelve inches on uh, twenty seven inches. And then don't forget our units. And then that yields in this example, as you see. The self weight of the beam is added, but normally we don't do that. But here, value O is added, and how calculate the density of concrete times the dimension V, H, and one, and one conversion vector shown by in the green because wanted to change exchange feet or foot to inches. So we calculated WU, the ultimate uh, distributed load. And then plug and chug, and that should be about 7.005 or about 7 tips per foot. Why I show here, it shows very good pictures and you see the same step that we yeah, follow for the question, he follows the same, is international. Okay. You know, this course you pass in nearest university. If you were in the American university, the same. Have a band. In the other universities in Canada, they are the same. I selected international and standard course and lecture for you. I hope you understand well and study very well. I'm going to have some reaction. Bye. 
that we use du times L is total load. It showed by dashed line. But you know, it's easy for you. That right. U times L is total load okay. divided by two, you have shear at support. Okay. We'll call this A, we'll call this B. I could say reaction A and reaction B, but I think we all both, well, we all know that those are both gonna be equal. So we'll sum moments A. Summing moments at A, I have W U L times L over two. I have um, R times L, right? So W L squared over two equals R L. R is W L. Simply, your total load divided by two, we have reaction at support. All right. But it makes it complicated for you. Now, you all should know enough by now that Sketching the shear diagram. What happens is um, I'm not really dealing with this. What does the shear diagram look like for a problem like this? It looks something. Maximum at support like at the middle right? zero. And this is a straight line, isn't it? So maybe what I want to do is try to find an equation for that line. Make sense? Everybody with me so far? Okay. So now I'm gonna cut a section. I'm gonna use my secret weapon of structural engineering. So I've got my reaction. And keeping in mind, maybe I should scroll up here. I'm cutting a section or a section at some distance where this is X. Right, some random distance. Right? He tries to give you one equation, but you can use the similarity of the triangles and find any place VU. They're the same, but different methods. Inside the beam, I have some unknown shear and some unknown moment. I don't know what they are. Maybe we'll call it, you know, to be consistent with our notation, maybe we'll call that MU. Call this BU. Okay, right. you, have, you can leave, no so problem. Distributed load is W sub U, that distance. Don't remember this stuff? We've done it. I know we have. All right. Sound good? Let's draw a bunch of arrows on it. All right. Collapse that into a point load W U on X. Now, we can go ahead and put a distance and say this is x over 2, but it actually isn't going to matter because we just care about shears. Now, how do I calculate VU? So, therefore,
Now, one thing I'll point out. Therefore, the, the, this method, we found equation. one formula for the U. Okay. I told you, it's one. easy. You consider the similarity of the triangles. It's e easier for you. Calculate phi VC or phi VC. So I react, right? What? So I'll say VU max is the reaction, which is WU over 2. What is WU? We already computed that. What is that? It is its strength. This is how much the concrete can withstand. I'm saying that it is being subjected to this much. Four regions total. S is the area in shear, or the area of shear reinforcement. FYT. Okay. So if you calculate that out, you're going to get a capacity of 79.2 kits. So what's BBC? 27.32 plus 59.4. Yeah, so, so this right here, this is how much load is being applied. This is how much it can withstand. That's a little better, isn't it? The last right. one is capacity, Before, the first one is applied load. All we were able to count on was the strength of the concrete, we'd be having some problems. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? I'm going to pull that up because I want that to make sense. This region 1 goes from x equals 0 to x equals 52. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Therefore, he has divided some region. Region 1, 2, 3. All right. And spacing what was our are different. spacing in that region? 4 inches. And we got, what do we get for VS? We got 79.2. And we got 86.72 for that. Is that a fair statement? He selected S and find the other things. What we got, right? This one inverse. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do region 2. However, I want you to tell me. All right. For region 2, consider S. Region number 3. Tell me what to put. Sure, for, for region 3, S more 10 inches. Well, one way of looking. For region yeah. four, you should I would get see a what line from something like this. It would, it would kind of be like a big stair step. From zero to 52, I'd have a value. Then 52 to 84, I'd have a value. From 84 to 124, I'd have a value. And then a value. You see shear sense? radius from the support right to the that. center. You re right. uh, reduce the uh, view and increase the spacing. But, okay, so, 
Therefore, it started to see the distance from the support. 0, 52 inches, 84, etc. And see what is the DU there. These are all repeating. It's clear then. Yes, this is important. You see that we have shear force and capacity of the section is written by the red line. Should be more than that line. Notice how the capacity is always above the, the diagram. Everybody see that? Yes, that the capacity is more that, than the applied uh, one, always. Does that make sense? Now what we're going to do, or next time, is we're going to learn how to design this thing. Uh, so with that, that's all I got. I will see you all next time. Okay, thank you. You saw this example. You saw that it was uh, quite similar to our method, but the details and some more explanation. Thank you very much. If you have any uh, question, please ask me. I am stopping the recording on Google Meet, and you can continue to ask your question from me. Now I saw that we have 14 students left. Some students left because of they had exam, midterm exam, etc. But if you have any question, please ask me. Don't forget that Thursday we have final exam. Everything included from A to Z. Even shear is included. Everything included from the beginning. Thank you very much for your country. Okay, Rakan, thank you, Prof. Basim, thank you, Prof. I thank you as, as well. And indeed, I thank you. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Good luck for the exam. If you have any question, I am at the user them and in the Google Meet, I answer you. But please let me now stop the recording if you have no problem. Thank you, Professor. Okay, I thank you actually. I am stopping the recording in the Google Meet.